are a little out of control. These homeless people, these mentally ill, they're roaming about, they're fighting with one another, they're picking on people who are riding their bicycles, they're jogging, they're in a drug-induced psychosis. Now that is Curtis Sliwa. He's the founder of the New York City's Guardian Angels. It's a vigilante group formed in 1979, known for patrolling tough areas, and they're known for marching in their red berets. Let me just... There we go. So I met up with them to go on patrol through Central Park. This is something that they haven't done for two decades. But because of the rise in assaults from homeless people and the perceived rise in crime and muggings, they're back out there. There are parts of this park at night in which there are no lights, there are no cameras, and there are no cops undercover. And that's where these muggings and strong arm robberies have been taking place. And that's why we've had to go back into the park and patrol those unincorporated areas that I guess the NYPD and Bill de Blasio don't think are really all that important. So Curtis explained to me that there's basically two areas to this park. There's the touristy area, and then there's the dark, seedy, dangerous areas where the crime is taking place. Many of you guys have been with me before here, the entrance to the ramble. But this is where it starts to get dicey, especially this area where a lot of gay men come looking for love in all the wrong places. Guys pretend to be gay, knock them upside the head. Don't just take their money and take their cell phones, but beat them unmercifully. So that was his warning to us as we proceeded up these dark, like small, narrow paths. The sun was going down, there was no light, and we went up into the ramble. Up there. What's he doing up there? Wait, what do you think? He's looking at nature at 8 o'clock at night? You think he's looking for bald eagles? No, he's scoping victims. So two decades ago, this is where the Guardian Angels would come to protect gay men. And Curtis says that the crime is back. Since they started their patrols, they've stopped two incidents. But then we were on to our next area, which he said was the most dangerous area. It was the north part of Central Park. You don't preemptively hit them. It's almost like ISIS, right? In the beginning, ISIS, ah, oh, no big deal. You know, it's like the Blasio and Brad, no big deal. The park is having an increase in crime. Really? If you let it go, then all of a sudden the thugs will rule the night. And if they rule the night and take the park from the police, then they'll come and they'll take it during the day. So he's actually challenged the mayor to come out on patrol with him and see what he sees. So I contacted the mayor's office and they gave us a statement saying the chance of being a victim of crime in Central Park is roughly one in 350,000 reflecting the NYPD's success in keeping the park safe for visitors. Over the past five years, Crime Central Park has fallen sharply. To me, even though the intentions might be good, my fear is right now we have such a big problem with police brutality and racism across the nation. People are questioning the attacks of Latinos and blacks by police officers. Will minority groups be able to trust these you know, people and will they be loose cannons and create more chaos? After they started in 1979, by 1981, they were such a conflict with the mayor and the police that essentially said we don't want vigilantes on the street. They went to the people of New York who overwhelmingly said, please stay on the subway, stay here, because sometimes just the perception of having someone looking out for you, that red beret became a sign of, okay, there's some order here. 